So, um, appreciate everybody listening. Appreciate all the interaction we're getting to from Facebook and Instagram. Looks like Facebook's doing some pretty decent numbers compared to what it used to do, so can't complain there. <sighs> this week, I want to talk about, uh, well, it's kind of like, it's more pride than anything, I guess, but jumping calls, things of that nature. But I think I've done something similar to this before in the past, but I didn't go back and look at any of my other episodes. I just wanted to do this off the cuff. Uh, with new ideas, or at least without even thinking about what ideas I did last time. So let's just get into it, shall we? One of the, well, what's the number one reason we give to interviewers when they ask us why, what what got you into Fire and EMS? Why did you want to work in Fire and EMS? And what's the number one response? To help others. I know. It's all the same, right? We always say we want to help others, and we do. <sighs> That's it's not really why. I, I mean, I did get into it to help people, of course. But I saw a job that looked fun. That's really what I saw. And I still do. I still see it that way. And I always will, I think. And it was just, I had fun. To me, it wasn't work. It was it, I was there to play. And I got to play, and then somebody paid me for it. So I can't really complain. Uh, but my question, though, is, is that desire still there? Do you still feel like you have that desire to help people? Do you still enjoy running the calls? Because if you don't, you need to get out. Why? That's literally your job. Your job is to run calls, good or bad. And we all know, and we've been doing this long enough, that... You're going to get a lot of BS calls. 95, 99% of your calls are going to be BS. We know this. We've been doing it long enough. We know. I remember when I worked at Care Ambulance in LA, and I kind of did things backwards, right? Because I started in the fire department first and then worked for a private ambulance company. And people go always ask me why. And, and, and there's a long list of things, and one of them was an injury. Uh, I was told I wouldn't be able to walk by the time I hit 40 if I – didn't stop doing fire. So stop fire, went to work on an ambulance because I still wanted to run calls and do that. So, but one of the things that always cracked me up when I was at care, well, let me back up. When I was at fire, when I was with the fire department, I didn't care what call we ran. I wanted to run calls. That was my thing. You got to jump in the engine. You get to ride out, run your calls, do what you got to do. You come back. The day's not the same. It changes. And that's what that that's what I liked about it, right? But then I went to work for care and guys would be complaining, you know, we would be on a day car, even a twenty four, and they'd be bored. And they're like, Man, I'm bored, I want to go do something. And then the tones drop and they get mad because the tones drop. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. You were bored. Now we have something to do, but you don't want to go do it because it's not the funnest call you want to run. That's that that it didn't make sense to me. It still doesn't make sense to me. Like, you go to work for an ambulance company, you're there to run calls. That's it. It's your job. You run calls. You help people. Good or bad, you run calls. So I never really understood that. And, and if you guys heard my episode a couple back, I was talking about my little Ricky Rescue moments where I like to listen to dispatch because it keeps my brain from wandering too much. Uh, I was listening to it, and something really caught my attention. I think this caught my attention last time, too. It always seems to trip me out, but... um. It's funny I say that because I was listening to Dispatch while I was writing this episode. I told you, it just it helps me quiet my mind. It helps me focus. So, But one thing I noticed that they do is they, I, over and over and over and over again on one particular day, I was hearing engine squads and trucks. They were canceling each other. They're like, hey, truck 104, this is engine 103. That's ours. We'll take it. It's in our area. And it could be the dumbest call. It could be for a nosebleed. It could be for sick person. It could be for a headache. It could be for whatever. It doesn't matter what it was for. They would run the calls constantly. They were constantly jacking each other's calls. They weren't jacking them. They were in the area and they would take them. Or if they just say, hey, that's not our area, but we're closer, we'll take it. That's pride. That's what that is. That's pride. They're, they're still enjoying that job. And, the other thing, too, is that is your job. 
Like your job is to help people and be the first one there. And if you can, you should be. That's what we do. I, I, it's just plain and simple. That's all there is to it. it you got to have that pride. If you don't, you've got to get out. You're you're not doing yourself anything good. You're not helping the public. You're not doing anything. You're not helping anybody. You're not. It's time to call it quits. When I was writing this, I was remembering uh, I worked for a station that was relatively slow. And one of the slower ones, they used to call us the retirement station because that's where you went when you wanted to retire and you didn't feel like working much. And so you would go here and you didn't run a f- whole lot of calls, maybe four in a in a 24-hour shift. So it was slow. They were also known as a fight nine. And part of the reason they were known as a fighting nine is – we were known for jumping calls. Now, we were a, a, a small little island is what you call it, right in the middle of a city. And it wasn't a big city. They have four stations. and But we were right smack in the middle of their, their district, and it was just a little pocket. Now, when I was there, the CAD system worked differently, and... If it wasn't our first in area, we didn't go. Or at least we weren't the first to be tapped out. The, ironically, there was an airport in this small city, and we were closer to the airport than the city department that was there. And so they would tap out a local department, and we would jack the calls. So we could go on radio. We could say, hey, we'll take it or whatever. And usually we just attach ourselves. And, and, and that was that was the other thing I was noticing uh, from the uh, rate dispatch the other day was that they were they were just attaching themselves to calls as needed, right? It's a full arrest. You've got one engine coming. They would jump. I know I'm scrolling out. I'm sorry. I'm scrolling out. Anyways, <clears throat> the CAD system changed right before I left in the way – well, it wasn't even the CAD system. It was the mutual aid agreement that we had with them, and we changed it to where it didn't matter who took the call or who was tapped out first. It's just whoever was closest. So it could be in the, the city's jurisdiction, but as a county department, we would get it because we were closer. And that was the agreement we had worked out between the neighboring agencies. And so before that happened, we were on a PR event one night, and there was about, well, there was a lot of us rolling to this this PR event. We had a brush engine with four guys. We had a squad with three guys. And so uh, all hungry, all willing to jack calls. That's just what we were known for, like I said. And on the way there, uh, a call drops because, you know, you're in service. Call drops, and it's in the neighboring city. And I pretty much have a straight line of sight to the location of where this fire was, or this report of a fire. And so we hear, uh, I think it was, I don't remember if it was 263 or two, engine 264, whatever, but they get tapped for vegetation fire at this adri- at this intersection. Me being me, doing what we normally do, I just keyed up the radio in comm center, brush engine nine. We're in the area. We'll take that call. You can cancel 263 or 264, whatever. We'll just say it was 263. So you can cancel 263. We'll take that call. And comm center copies, they cancel 263, attach us to the call. And like I said, I can line of sight, I can see this intersection, but I'm about, I don't know, a quarter mile away. I don't see any smoke. I see nothing. There's no gathering of people. None of that. It was a freeway on and off ramp. And we're sitting there and, and we're rolling. We light up. We're code three. And... All of a sudden, I hear 263 to comm center. Show us responding. Cancel brush engine nine. Mind you, I already canceled them. So at this point, comm center's kind of like, uh, and I can tell comm center's not wanting to respond because they don't know what to say or what to do at this point. So I get back on the radio, and I'm in medic engine 263. This is brush engine nine. You can cancel. We're in the area investigating. Nothing showing. You know, leave it at that. 
think nothing of it because again, there's nothing showing why we don't need two engines. Whatever, I've got two, I've got an engine and I got a squad. I got seven guys already rolling to this thing. I don't need another engine at this point, especially I'm a quarter mile away and nothing showing. So, two sixty three gets back on the radio, brush engine on. You can cancel. You're in my city. So, oh, and I look at my buddy, my engineer, and did he? And he just kind of looks and laughs and nods his head. And I go, should I? And he goes, eh, it's up to you. It's at 263. You can cancel. I am in the area. Nothing showing. In fact, comm center, you can show us available on radio AOR. 263 gets back on the radio and comm center. Keep the call open. Show us in, show us responding. ETA is two minutes. So now it's just a big pissing match. And calm center, brush into nine. There is nothing showing, no call, cancel all the incoming units. We are available on radio, returning to uh, our PR event. At this point, a chief gets on the radio, and I don't remember who he was. I don't remember his number. I know he was higher than a battalion chief. I know that much. I think it was either division chief or the chief of one of our departments. I don't remember who. Uh, and he says, brush engine nine, you will cancel. 263, continue. So I'm guessing it was their department now that I think about it because he canceled me and kept theirs rolling. So whatever. But my whole point is I was trying to jack the call, but at the same time I was trying to do them a favor and allow them to stay in quarters because it was right around dinner time. And I thought, you know what, as a, as a, as an engine company, if you cancel me during dinner, I'm okay with it, especially if it's nothing showing and you go AOR. Cool. Appreciate it. Thanks for the love. Move on. My initial goal was just to piss them off, to be honest. And I succeeded in that obviously, but again, same thing though, but at the same time it was help them out, let them stay in quarters, eat dinner, enjoy the rest of their night because they're a pretty busy department. They run a lot of calls. They didn't see it that way. They got pissed off. And <laughs> to make a long story even longer, we were about two weeks later, maybe a week, maybe two weeks. I don't know, somewhere around there. We get a call. Uh, we're going to be the Rick team for a structure fire in their area. And we're a long ways out. A long ways we're we're good 10 to 15 minutes out which i don't know why they tapped us but whatever and it's a mutual aid agreement i get that and again this was before they switched our dispatching but they we roll on this structure fire and it's a working fire we pull up we start pulling equipment out we're getting ready we're doing our 360s which we didn't need to do a 360s already done but my whole thing is i'm going to do my job the way I was taught to do it, and my I was taught I'm going to do my 360 and mitigate any hazards that are going to be there if they haven't been already. Maybe a second pair of eyes or third or fourth will be bit good. And so I do my stuff, and nobody is looking at us. They're not making eye contact. They're not saying hi. Now I get it. We're focused. We're in the we're in the zone, and we're doing this now. But you can still be courteous. And they weren't. They were far from it. They were just not having it when we were leaving. My captain came up to me and another guy, and they were like, hey, um," he says, I noticed they weren't being friendly. They wouldn't make eye contact. They wouldn't talk to me or nothing. I said, no, I know. And as we're just about to get in the engine, I told him, I said, hey, I got to, he goes, I'm going to go talk to their chief. And, no, 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 Cap, come back. He's like, no, no, I'll be back in a minute. And he took off. Anyways, he went and laid, laid into their chief. I guess him and the chief had been friends for a long time and just ripped him a new one for his guys, giving us attitude and a snap. Well, the captain gets back in the rig and we're driving back to the station and I say, Hey Cap, I gotta tell you something about the, what had happened with us and them a couple of weeks ago and I proceeded to tell him the story and he's pissed at this point because now he knows why they were the way they were and he laid into the chief, but then he was like, ah, I don't care, whatever. Uh and it turned out to be a funny thing and my captain gets it. He was laughing, having a good time about it later on. But anyways, uh my whole point is just, you know, have that pride. Take pride in your job. Enjoy your job. That's what you do. If you don't enjoy it, we, especially if you're on a private box and you're trying to go 
to a big municipality department or whatever. If you're not happy now, what makes you think you're going to be happy later? If you're burned out now in a box, what makes you think you're not going to be burned out on an engine or a truck or whatever? It's going to happen. You're going to be there. You got to change your attitude. That's all there is to it. And I, I just, I don't understand why private EMS is so different. I really don't. And I understand we're restricted on what we can do. We can't really cancel other units most of the time, at least not in Southern California. It's very hard for us to cancel a unit or attach ourselves to calls. We can't do any of that. So for the most part, I could once in a while just because I knew dispatch and I knew county. We were okay. And they were cool with us doing that from time to time. And if you'd been there long enough and you were mature enough and knew what you were doing and you showed what you were doing, they would let you. But um, I, I just, I don't get it. You know, there was times where I could be sitting somewhere posting or or we were at a hospital or whatever and we'd clear and say hey you know give us that call it's in our area we're closer we can beat that other unit and dispatch would be like no i've got a unit coming from across town they'll be there shortly oh and i'm like seriously and we'd be sitting there and watch the unit go by two minutes later i'm like man i could have already been to that call you're not you're doing exactly what these guys in the field are doing you are not helping the public send your most available unit your closest unit Get the job done and start making things happen quicker. This is why your response times are low. This is why departments don't like you. You're doing stuff like this. It's not helping you. Take, you know, I'm talking about pride and, and take your own pride as a dispatcher and send the closest unit, even if they request it. If they are closer and they are correct, give it to them. Do your public service. And start the closer unit. And I get it. You're looking at a CAD and you see something different. But we got we got boots on the ground. We know where we're at. We usually know where the other units are at. A lot of times when and, and where I was at, we would have everybody's cell phone number from other stations or other units. And we'd just text, hey, where are you guys at? Oh, we're here. Oh, dude, we're way closer. We'll, we'll try to jump it. You know, whatever. People don't want to do that. Just jump the calls. It doesn't matter. We jumped a call one time. My partner and I, we were dropping off a no-need transport, and he was doing paperwork. I walk out, and he says, uh, I think I told this story before, years ago, and a call had dropped, and it was a unit far away. We were close. We were right around the corner, and it was for a sick patient. That's all it came in as, and they were shipping, sending a unit pretty far away. My part, they sent us out a page. My partner comes out and goes, hey, let's take that call, and I'm like, dude, it's a sick patient, you know, it's not going to be good. He's like, no, let's just take it. He's like, we're closest. Let's just run it. I said, All right, we'll do it. So we jacked the call and we run it. We were super close to this call and we showed up and ended up being a self-inflicted GSW and started to work the guy for a little bit. And then we ended up canceling it. I won't go into details on that because I've done it before, but my point is you don't know what that call is going to be. How many times have calls been mislabeled, misdispatched, whatever you want to call it. And it ends up being something totally crazy off the wall that you were not expecting. So take the call, run the call, do your public service. Um, but, yeah, my biggest thing is, look, your job in EMS and fire is to run calls. And if you get into fire thinking you're just going to run fires, uh, don't go work for a local municipality. You need to go work for the Forest Service. You can go run brush fires all day long or all summer long when you can, when they have them. And that's all you run. You won't run medical aid. You're not going to run TCs. You're not going to run lift assist. You're going to run fire. That's it. That's how you're going to do it. Otherwise, you're going to run medical aids. Now, I know some departments in some areas who are listening to this, fire doesn't run medical aids. I get it. Go work there. But if you are looking to run fire in a system where fire department runs medical aids, you are going to have to run medical aids. Whether you're a paramedic or not, you're going to run them. You have to. That's how it works. So you're going to have to change that attitude. you gotta, you got to turn it around and know that any call can be anything. It can change in a heartbeat. But your whole job is to run calls. That's it. It's just to run calls. And go back in service as soon as you can so you can run another one be ready to run another one and that is your public service and that is your public service announcement from the ems lounge anyways 
That's all I got for you. It was just something that was on my brain. Wanted to get it off. And uh, other than that, uh, we'll hopefully get another one out to you next week. You guys have a good one. Keep lounging.